Okay, welcome back to our second lecture on faith, BC 111. Any questions from our online students? Do you have any questions? Everyone's following. Uh, Shiv Kumar, Chaya, Krisha, Karen, Nina, Prabhu. Everything is okay? All the questions? Any questions? Okay, no questions. All right, let's go ahead. All okay. All right, I see your responses. Thank you. Let's move forward. All right. So we were we are in lesson number sixteen. We were just talking about uh, how to exercise faith. Basically, it's a summation of uh, all that we have covered. We're just putting it down in uh, in simple steps so that uh, we can remember and and uh, uh, practice this again. I want to re-emphasize it's not a formula that we're presenting, but just you know uh, this is the way we would go about. Uh, exercising faith in God. Just to quickly review, uh, we have a desired goal based on God's word. Number two, be determined to have what God has promised. Number three, we fill our heart with the word of God. Let the word of God occupy your heart fully to eliminate all doubt and uh, you know negative things. And, uh, number four, we pray and receive by faith. Uh, we spent some time on that to emphasize that we must believe before we receive. So believing happens, and then the receiving happens. And then we must speak our faith. So you declare what you believe. You call it as done. You know, like Romans 4.17 says, God calls things that are not as though they were. Like he said, you are Abraham. Even before he had one son, like you said, you are Abraham. Abraham means father of a multitude. So God has already declared him as father of a multitude even before he had a son. Right? So he called things that were not as though they were. So you declare uh, like that in accordance to the word of God that it is done. And this is who um, they are. Number six, we said we have to act. In accordance to our faith, whatever you can do, you keep taking steps towards that goal, whatever you can do. And as you act your faith, God's power is going into operation. Fulfill that work to make that thing happen in our lives. And also, our faith is being brought to maturity as you act your faith. Your faith is becoming stronger. It's, brought, it's, bringing, it's being brought to a place where it can produce. Last two points here in exercising our faith. Number seven is we thank and praise God. So, you know, when you believe that you have received, you thank and praise God. So, Father, thank you. It's done. Father, thank you. I've received the blessing. Even before you can enjoy the blessing, you thank Him for the blessing. You know, you say, God, thank you. It's done. I receive it. So you thank and praise God. And uh, it talks about Abraham. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So you thank him and you praise him uh, even before things happen. Before you actually see it, you thank him. Now, of course, when it actually happens, you will also praise and thank him. But we are saying now, as you're exercising your faith, you're thanking and praising him before it has actually happened. By faith. Just like how you can receive by faith, you can also thank and praise God by faith before it actually happens. Okay? So you, you give him thanks, you worship him, you praise him. And lastly, number eight is you stay in faith with endurance. So after you've done everything, after you've done all of the above, what do you do? You stay in a place of faith with endurance. So you don't have to keep faith encouraged 
And the way to keep your faith encouraged is just go keep meditating in the word. Keep declaring the word. Keep acting. Keep doing what you can. Keep praising. Keep thanking. Right? So you stay in faith with endurance. You don't quit. Right? You stay in faith with endurance. Okay, in, in a place of faith. All right. So what I want to encourage you is to try and apply these things to your lives. Okay. I know you're saying, okay, I'm only a Bible college student. What you know, uh, what what am I gonna do? Well, think about your future, think about things that you feel God is calling you to do in the ministry, whatever, you know, in the future, and you begin. You pray about it, of course. Make sure that that's what God wants for your life. And then you begin to have faith for it. Right? Each one. Each one can apply it in a different way. Right? So you begin to have faith for it. You begin to see it in your mind's eye. And you begin to envision it. You begin to dream. I have my, my personal diary with me. So when I was like a 15, 16 years old, I, I, I used to have faith for a big church that I could serve God and, you know, thousands of people. And I used to draw it. I still have those notebooks with me. So in those days, I would say, God, that's what I believe. Now, it's been a long journey, but we're journeying into it year by year, you know. So the journey started then. And I have those, and if I open those books, those, those, those uh, diaries, very encouraging, you know, as a 15 year old, 16 year old, this is what I was believing God for. And I would big draw a big stadium, lots of people in it, and you know, preaching to them, believing God that one day those things will happen. You know? So, uh, you begin to have some things are short term, some things are long term, some things are for your life, some things are maybe you know, small things, okay, whatever, whether they're small things or big things. The, the way to have faith is the same procedure, the same practice okay so i want to encourage you in your life whatever you may need to have faith for do it now begin to use these principles in your life begin to apply them right so let me see if there are any questions online and others we go to the next chapter any questions online class everybody's okay yes ren question Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so Ren's question here is, what if we keep saying, "I want this to happen. I want that to happen," but it's not God's will, right? But so, so that's our first step, which is to know what is God's will, right? Which means, how, how will you know God's will? I think you are having a course on fulfilling God's purpose. For your life, right? So in that course, we look at nine signposts that can, and God can use any one of any of those nine signposts to reveal to us what is His will, right? So we talk about, and I, I don't, and uh, it's been a while since I read those things, but you know, for example, we know God's word, you know, the word of God. The gifts and grace that God has put on your life, the stirring in your heart, you know, the leading of the Holy Spirit, and sorry, the seeds of destiny, the seeds, things that, that God puts in your life. So there are many of these things, right? Um, the counsel of godly people. Sometimes it could be prophetic word, dreams, visions, God gives. So all of these things, so all these are signposts. I'm not saying you need to have all nine of those signs, but God can use any combination of them, right? So our first responsibility, especially when it's for personal things, right? Of course, for example, like we said, God does want churches to be started. That's part of his plan. But you specifically, where does he want you to go? 
Right? Where does he want you to start? Does he want you to start a church? Right? That's something very specific. Now, how will you determine if it, if there's a burning desire in your heart? Right? That I'm this is what I must do. And if there's a grace, there are grace and gifts on your life aligned to that, then you know that's what you're called to do. There's a calling on your life for that. Right? Or something else, you know. So we dis determine God's will based on that. So you pray and say, God, uh, here are three things that feel like I, I, I need to do. Are these from you? Uh, are these your will for my life? Is this the way you want me to do? You pray and ask the Lord. Then and, and say, God, please confirm, please reveal to me by your Holy Spirit that, you know, is this your will? And so once you determine God's will, then you set your goal. That's what I'm going to go after. Okay. So that's the first thing. And then your will is involved in the sense when God reveals it to you, then you you lock your will into it. So that's what I, I know God wants me to do. And no man, no devil is going to stop me from pursuing that because maybe God spoke it to your heart. Maybe it's a burning desire in you. Uh, maybe it's maybe a prophetic word came. Maybe God spoke to you in a dream. There's so many ways that God speaks, but then you have confirmed it, then you pursue it. Okay? So, any questions from anyone else? Yes, Nina. Yes, yeah. So when we, have, when we talk about salvation for family members, so there's a question in the class about salvation for family members. Of course, the Bible says God, now this we know in Scripture, hmm? First Timothy chapter 2, 3 and 4. This is the will of God, uh, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. First Timothy, yeah, chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Right? God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So it's already written here. God wants them. So all people, means it includes all the family. He wants them to be saved. So it's already there. So now we don't even have to ask God, do you want him to be saved? Of course, it's, it's written here. He wants everybody to be saved. So that's the will of God. Now what must we must uh, extend our faith. And what can we do through our faith? Of course, they have to make the decision. But through our praying, we can make it easy for them to hear the gospel and receive the gospel. Because, uh, and we, you will learn about this in the course on prayer, where we will learn that, course on prayer intercession, where we will learn that the God of this world, Satan, is blinding the minds of people in order to prevent the light of the gospel from going in. 2 hmm? Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, 4, and 5. Okay? The God of this world. So Paul writes, you know, if our gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of those who do not believe, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ should shine in unto them. So what does our praying do? Our praying deals with the blindness of the devil is putting. It takes that off. So then, when somebody shares the gospel, they can receive. So that's where prayer and our faith, our prayer and our faith comes in for the unsaved. Right? So that's something you can do freely because God already said in His Word, He wants everybody to be saved. So you can do it with confidence. Okay. Yes, Anna. Ah, Ren's question. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hmm. All right. So let's say, so Anand's asking a question. Um, so it's something for our personal lives. We're praying for something. Uh, it's not happening yet. So what should we do? Should we continue in faith? Or, uh, you know, is it uh, like, how do we, I mean, is it God's will or not? 
Yeah, that's that's a question mark, right? So I think then we go back to the starting point, right? And we say, God, uh, I want to know if this is really something you want for my life, right? Or is it something you want me to pursue? Or is it something you don't want me to pursue? Right? So you go back to that. Right? And you hear from God. Right? And then when you hear from God, if he says, yes, that's for you, that's my will for you, that's, if there's a piece of God about it, then you go into it. Or sometimes what I do is, for, for something that's, things that are not very um, consequential, not very dangerous, you test the waters. And that means in small things, you can try it out and see if this is what God wants. And that's okay for small things, but not for big things. You can't try out marriage and then see if it, that's not an not option. <laughs> so that is serious business. But for small things, you can test and see, you know, uh, this, this is what God wants me to do. And then as you go, as you keep trying it, then you will, it'll become clearer. Yes, this is what God wants me to do, or this is not what I should be doing. Right? So you could do that for some small things. But the goal is that we need to know for sure if God wants that. If it is something God wants you to do, then even if it takes time, you stay with it. Don't give up. You know? Because there are many factors that go into, especially when it has to do with a life assignment, uh, there are many factors involved in seeing that happen. God needs to get us ready. He needs to get other people ready. He needs to get situations ready. Everything has to come in line in order to see that fulfilled. I answered your question or not? Yeah. yeah, so if you know it is the will of God and you're going after it and it's not yet happened, then, yeah, it is a time where your faith is being tested. Your commitment to it is being tested, that you're really committed to it. You know? So, for example, in the first two years when we started the church, so we, we, came, to, we came back to India in um, uh, December 2000. And then in January, uh, in February 2001, uh, we started the church in a very small way. The vision was there. We started. First two years, after we saw the church, uh, we didn't see, you know, it was maybe just uh, maybe 30, 40, 50 people, something like that. You know, so the church didn't grow. Or it wasn't like, you know, oh, my thought was, okay, we'll have hundreds of people, things like that. So it's just maybe first two years, 30, 40. But money-wise, we had no problem. You know, we were already doing television. We, would, we had started printing books. We started doing, so money-wise, there was no problem. But in terms of the number of people coming, it was very small. And also in the first two years, I was hearing of other people. They came, they started the church, they got discouraged, they closed the church, they went back. So in my mind, I said, God, am I also going to be like one of them? You know, that I came, uh, I started the work, then got discouraged, went back, and I said, no. I am not going to be like that. I, so in my mind, I made up a decision. Even if I have to spend the rest of my life serving 50 people, I'll do it. I made that decision in my mind. I'm come, I've come here. Even if I have to serve just 50 people, I will do it. I, I want no turning back. So the first two years was like that. You know? Uh, it was like I had to prove that I'm committed to this, that I really believe God called us to do this. And then after that, we started seeing things happen slowly. You know? So I think uh, there is that, like you said, a testing time when uh, we have to prove our faith. We have to be committed to what God has called us to do. And then we will begin to see things progress and happen. 
Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Prince. Action. Faith in action. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I understand your question. So, Prince's question is: uh, Suppose uh, I, I, you know, I, I'm. I'm wanting to believe God for something, but I don't find the required gift or grace in that, should I consider it not as the will of God? And the example Prince gave, or suppose I feel like I want to preach, I want to minister God's word, but I don't seem to have the ability to preach. Right? Uh, should I consider that it's not the will of God for me to preach? So my answer to that would be, you see, every gift that God gives to us, he gives it in seed form. He gives it in seed form. That means it's not, it doesn't, every gift that God gives has to be nurtured and developed. It, it doesn't come to us in a mature form, in its full form. It comes as a seed in a very, it comes rough. So what do we have to do? we have to discover that and usually you discover the seed starting with a passion for it the the fact that you have a desire a passion for something is an indicator that you have a seed towards that okay? that that is your passion not everybody will have a passion for the same thing right? each one has passions for something different but the fact that you have something stirring in your hearts Towards that, in the case, let's say in this case, it's preaching. Okay, it's it's most likely the gift is there, but the gift is in seed form. It's not in its mature form. It's in the starting form. So what we have to do, we have to nurture it. We have to develop that gift, right? And uh, and we have to keep on learning. Right? So for me, in my own life example, until I was thirteen, I was very afraid to speak. In front of people, I would never stand like I would not do this. I would never stand in front of people and pe speak. So I never took part. You know, uh, normally I wouldn't participate in like you know in school they'll have this elocution, speaking things. I would never participate. So everybody else go. I'm not. I didn't like speaking in front of people. But after I got saved, and filled with the Holy Spirit, something just changed. Now it was like a burning passion to share but i have to keep improving i have to keep learning and even now i'm learning in fact after after every almost every sunday I, I i reflect on my preaching sometimes i go back and i listen to my own message and i i say okay this is what i did wrong so on sunday i made some mistakes in my preaching this sunday <laughs> So I've been preaching maybe for 40 years, almost 40 years. But even after 40 years, I still make mistakes. So Sunday, oh, I should not have said those things. You know, those are things I should not have spoken in public. Those are private things. Like when I told, you know, I don't keep my phone on silent. And all. So those are things. So I said, oh, no, I should not have spoken that from the pulpit. Right? So I corrected myself. You know, okay, I have to be careful. Next time, I must not say those things. So that means even now, after 40 years of preaching, I'm still improving, learning, you know. So I go back, I listen. Oh, okay, that, that was not right. I shouldn't do it again, you know. So I'm still learning. So always, we are always learning. It's like never, we're not fully perfect, right? We are always learning. We learn how to do something better how to communicate, so many things. So uh, 
you shouldn't be discouraged. Uh, the goal is to keep on learning, keep developing the gift, right? And uh, and then you grow in it. Now, obviously, if the gift is not there, then you can say that okay, I will leave that space. Separate. That's not for me. That's for somebody else. Yeah? Uh, so, for example, the area of music. Yeah, I tried learning guitar for one year when I was young. After one year, I said, okay, this is not for me. I at least tried. At least I tried. So, okay, leave it alone. It doesn't mean I cannot learn guitar, but it will never be at the level of somebody who can play and lead. It will be something you sit at home, you by yourself, you play. <laughs> that is okay. But don't do it in public. <laughs> that kind of a thing, you know. Because to lead in worship or music, that is a different thing. That, that you need. Uh, the skill you need the blessing God's gift you know so that is not there for me okay I know that is you leave it to other people so like that you would recognize okay fine anything else any other questions okay so let's move to the next lesson which is lesson number 17 where we want to answer a question what happens if we don't see results? So, what if there are failures? Now, I haven't filled the content for this. I just, it's still like a outline, but let's explain this. See, what happens if we experience failure in our exercising faith? Now think about this, you know, uh, maybe for some of us as children, when the first time you try to ride a cycle, bicycle, maybe you started riding cycle, maybe you fell. I fell many times <laughs> as a child, uh, trying to learn, trying to ride a cycle. Now. We don't say, ah, the cycle will never work. We don't say that. Just because you fall once, twice. What, what does it mean? It's not that you can never cycle. It just means, okay, you're learning to balance. You're learning how to, you know, ride the bike. Oh, you're just, it's just a learning. And after some time, you ride a few times, full. You can do hands-free. You can go, all those things, all those... Uh, you know, you can do a lot of circus on the bike, you know. Same thing with driving a car. You know, maybe when you first started driving the car, you know, car will jerk, 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 stop, uh, sometimes even accident, all those things. But that doesn't mean you cannot learn. What do you do? You keep going. Keep going. And then after that, you become expert. It comes very naturally. Of course, you still have to follow the rules. You have to be careful. It doesn't mean you can... Anytime you can just close your eyes and drive, no. You're, you're always following the rules. But you've gone from being a learner to becoming much better. Same thing in us learning to exercise faith in God, to have faith in God. It is something that we have to learn to do. Because most of the time, we are living by our natural senses most of the time everything we do in the world naturally we are relying on our natural senses you know it's so we are not we are not using faith or exercising faith by default and it is something we have to learn to do okay through the word of god and as we spend time in the word we renew our mind we understand the principles of faith. We understand how to exercise faith. Then we try, we practice this. And sometimes we will have failures. Sometimes we'll make mistakes. It doesn't happen. Uh, that doesn't mean faith in God will not work. That doesn't mean God's word is wrong. Or doesn't mean God has failed. It means we are learning. We are learning. Right? So... Why do failures happen? Not because 
something is wrong with God or something is wrong with his promises or no it's because we are learning how to have faith how to exercise faith and the best way to learn to exercise faith is by practicing it by doing it right so that's why I keep saying you know uh, it's not enough to attend the course it's good to attend the course but the most important thing is to practice what you're learning right put it into your own life that's how you learn to walk by faith and then God may have called you to do great things right how are you going to do those great things as you keep exercising your faith keep using your faith and over time you keep growing into doing big things for God yeah so you start small but then you do big things right and 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 I, it, you grow into it you know, it doesn't happen overnight uh, in the beginning there may be failures there may be difficulties you know I, when I go back in time about our books and I remember the early days when we you know this was before the days of Xeroxing uh, when we used to do what cyclist selling so I used to write an article and I had to believe God for 3,000 rupees to make copies of those I used to write articles I had to believe God and I remember once I, I wanted to print a little manual and it was like 30,000 rupees or something and I had to pray fasting praying I think for three days almost God please send me the money I need to uh, print this I want to print this this manual and not it's not printing means it was you know it was called cyclostelic it's different from Xeroxing and printing but I remember those days I had to fast and pray to get the money to even to do 100 copies it was like that but that's how we started today I'm not worried I don't even think about it really like this year's budget we are spending 40 lakhs next year the budget is 80 lakhs just for books print the books and I'm not worried I'm not even thinking about it I don't handle it somebody else is handling like the the, the publications team they're doing the work I'm not even thinking about it you know my job would be write the books write new books you know keep writing new so that's my thing so I just keep writing and I'm not worried but you see when we started it was like that you know so today when we spend 40 lakhs 80 lakhs maybe soon we might be spending crores just for printing no what not what it's not thinking about it you know I just believe you know uh, next week uh, we will be in Delhi there is 1,000 pastors and I think about 6,000, the youth conference, I think we'll have 6,000 people. For all of them, we're going to give uh, a set of three books. So that means we're talking about 3,000 books being sent just to the pastors, 6,000 times three, about 18,000 books for the youth. I don't know, they would have printed, we told them to print and send it, so I think it would have printed and gone. But again, I'm not even worried. But those in the beginning, to print 100 copies, God, I have to have faith. No, you know, books are going in thousands, but not worried at all. Just know, you know, just we know God will take care of these things. Right? So what am I saying? In the beginning, or at least when we are starting to learn to have faith in God, yeah, we will have failures. We will fall off the cycle. Problem is not with the cycle. Problem is we are learning how to ride the cycle. After some time, you will ride the cycle without holding hands. <laughs> right? right? You will come to that place. You don't have to worry. But in the beginning, if you fall a few times, it's okay. What do you do? Get back and ride again. You don't stop riding the cycle. Right? So same thing with faith, right? Just because in the beginning, yeah, you have some failures. Sometimes you pray and it doesn't happen. Okay, what do you do? You go back to the Bible. Go back to the Word of God. God, how can I, where did I make mistake? I need to be more in the Word. 
I need to pray in the word of God. I pray the word of God. I need to, you know, grow in this. And then as God sees you journeying through little things, he will give you big things. Right? So failures happen not because of God, but because we missed it somewhere. We are learning. So you keep learning. Yeah? And then, so what do you do when you experience failure? Here are a few things I'm just sharing with us. So when failure happens, you yield to God's grace. So, for example, once in our ministry, we saw a dead man come to life. But there are other times we prayed for the dead. They didn't come back to life. Okay. When we were in, um, in Gujarat, Navsari, doing a meeting, uh, this was open crusade. And I was preaching on the mighty name of Jesus, just gospel message, small crowd, not, not maybe only 200 people there. Then in the, during the, while I was preaching, uh, I saw at the back, they brought one, they were, bring, they were carrying one person coming into the crowd. And uh, I continued preaching, but suddenly from the back, they saw, there was like people started crying loud. Then the pastor, was listening to the message and then he got down, he went and he saw, I mean, this was like about 15 minutes after the, the reason they were crying was because one man died. They had brought, he was very bad, he was very in a bad condition. This was in the village area. They brought him from the home to the meeting for prayer. But before anything happened, he died. And here we were preaching on the name of, mighty name of, Jesus. The man was the, right there at the back. Then the pastor, he said, hey, we are praying in the name of Jesus. I mean, we are hearing about the name of Jesus. So then he said in Hindi, he said, Eshu ke naam mein ut. So this man who was dead now about 15 minutes, they were crying, shouting, all that noise are happening. This man came back to life. Then, they were walking to the front, two people on his side. Okay, and they brought him to the stage. I touched. His body was cold. Not like normal body. You touch it, there's some amount of warmth. This man's body was cold. So you know, he died. And they were shocked. They were those people. And the mother and two sisters. They were crying in front of this thing. Crying, I said, oh, you know, they were crying with joy and they didn't <laughs> because the brother had died. He was lying dead for about 15 minutes there until this pastor had gone. And the pastor had simple faith. And this man came. Now, one year later, we sent our youth there to the same place. This man was still alive. You know, and he testified, you know, what happened. Like he came. He had experience, whatever. But then there were other times when we prayed for the dead, especially the children, never came back to life. Very painful. Some we spent whole, whole night praying, didn't come back. So, what should we do? In that situation, when it doesn't happen, we don't blame God. You see, his word is always there. He said, Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. He's already given us his word. Go do it. If Jesus was there, he would have raised the dead, especially little children. No questions. You would have raised the faith that the parents came with faith. But there are cases it didn't happen. So what do we do? Number one. We just yield to God's greatness. God, you are still great. I don't understand why you are still great. Nothing on God's side has changed. Secondly, God, what can I learn from this? What can I learn? Right? Where did we go wrong? And, 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 and you know, 
This is not to condemn ourselves, but to learn. Maybe God, maybe I really didn't have faith. Maybe I, I should have first built up my faith or the faith of the people when all of us were praying. We will talk about collective faith, you know, when, uh, when more people are praying together, right? What happens in that situation? So try to learn. Yeah, it didn't work, but I can, let me see what I can learn from this situation, right? Thirdly, put your focus back on God and His Word. You know, don't let the situation tell you what to do next. No, let the Word of God tell you what to do, right? So, because what happens? Suppose you drive the car, you have an accident. Are you going to say, I will never again drive the car? No. You will learn, okay, I made a mistake. I didn't stop when the light was red or I didn't look in the left or right, left or right. Something, I made my mistake. I made a mistake. But I need to get my focus back on what is possible. Right? Not on what the accident happened. So same thing. Get your focus back on God and His Word. God's Word still says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. God's Word still says, this is His promise. His promise is true. Put your focus back on God and on His Word. And be determined never to quit walking by faith. Because there is no choice. As a believer, you can only live one way. Bible says we walk by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. We walk by faith. There's no choice. So you can't not walk by faith. You have to walk by faith in God. Right? So you get back and say, okay, God, I'm learning. Uh, I want to grow in this area. I want to learn from my mistakes. I will develop and I will walk by faith. So will we face, uh, you know, will we face failure? Yes. Why? Because we are learning. God is perfect. His word is perfect. But we are growing in this, right? So we make mistakes, learn, and keep on walking by faith. Chirag, question. Um. Yeah, Chirag, sorry. Yeah. Yes. Ah. In in I would say it's because of our um, a failure on our side. Why would I say that? Because in God's word, he has already commissioned us. He said, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. All right? So that commission is already given. Now that doesn't mean we just go randomly and raise the dead. There has to be, especially in a case when it's a child, or uh, the, the family has to be involved. So in these cases, the family wanted to see their baby raised. So they wanted, they are believers, they wanted. So that's why we know we can step into that situation saying, God, we want it. Right? And what is the will of God? That with long life, he satisfies us and shows us his salvation. That's the will of God. So I would say it was more our failure than the will of God not being there because the parents wanted, you know. But if it was somebody older and, you know, somebody different in a different situation there, yeah, you would look to God, say, God, what do you want me to do in this situation? Do you want me to pray for the resurrection of the dead or not? You know, and then move according to what the Lord leads. But in these cases where, you know, parents are involved, they want to see the child back, you know, the heart of God. Uh, and so you can move confidently based on that. 
Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Bima. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the question here from Bimal is, um, suppose we are in a very difficult situation, example like Joseph who was put in prison, but then God has given him a promise saying, I will make you prime minister. How can we be at peace? Be peaceful. Be peaceful and be patient in that situation. So, for example, this would, how would Joseph have done it? By just remembering the word of God. Yeah. So, in Joseph's case, Psalm 105, Psalm 105, um, I think it's verse 20. Um, so, in Joseph's case, uh, God had given him a word. Psalm 105. Yeah. Verse 19. Verse 18 and 19. Hmm? Psalm 105, 18 and 19. Hmm. So, see, he had God's word. What was the word? He had a picture, actually two pictures, right? That he had a dream, he had two dreams. He saw the sun, the moon, the 11 stars fall down. And then he saw the grain of sheaves of corn bow before him. So he had two pictures in his mind. That means God had given him a word. And so verse 19 is telling us, Psalm 105, the word of the Lord came to him. God had given him his word. But that word also tested him. So Joseph, are you going to believe this? So how could Joseph have kept himself in a place of faith and endurance and peace in a very difficult situation just by again focusing on the word god has spoken god gave me two dreams god will fulfill this he will make it happen you know so that's how we have to hold on to the word of god right? and um, through that through faith in that word we can be in a place of uh, strength and endurance in Hebrews chapter 6, yeah, we have two minutes. Uh, Hebrews chapter 6 is talking about the faith of Abraham. Uh, Hebrews 6 verse 12 tells us Abraham through faith and patience in, inherited the promise. Hebrews 6 verse 12. And then it continues to tell us that verse 18, that be, it was impossible for God to lie. Hebrews 6 verse 18. right? Um, so Hebrews 6 verse 12, he through faith and patience he inherited the promises. Uh, and then the next the remaining of it tells us that Hebrews 6, God cannot lie. You know, so Abraham must have held on to the promise. My God cannot lie. And it says, because God could swear by no one else, he swore by himself. He said, I will fulfill this. I will make it happen for you. Right? So that's how we can have endurance. But knowing who has spoken, God has spoken. And if God has spoken, cannot lie. Okay. Uh, let's close uh, so that we can get ready for our next class. We're going to pray together and uh, we will close. Thank you. Um, online students as well. Thank you. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We pray that we will have the same spirit of faith as uh, people in the Bible uh, to do mighty things for your kingdom as we learn to walk by faith. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, everyone, thank you. Thank you. God bless. Uh, enjoy uh, your break and the rest of the day. I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you.